of good reasons for a school to have a marching band. A band provides stirring music. It has color. It's a good show that's fun to watch. It stirs up school spirit. But most of all, it's an exciting, fun-filled activity for a lot of people. Short people. Tall people. Thinkers. Those who talk, and those who listen. Leaders, and followers. How does one take a crowd of individual students and make them into a marching band? Well, first you need a director, like Bob Gomez, to pull them all together. I try to get them to develop, you know, a respect for each other and knowing that the, it's a, a team effort. And even though they're individuals, what comes out in the end is the most important thing, is what, you know, they've done uh, performance together. I try to keep it uniform so it doesn't look like this. 250 individuals sticking out doing their own thing. first get here, uh, you know, they don't know their left foot from the right, so we give them a rock to carry in their left hand, <laughs> so they know which foot to put uh, down first. Uh, but after uh, two or three weeks of intensive training, they're able to do it most of the time. Sometimes we're still working on it when they're seniors. <laughs> we have our doubts about some of them at this point. They've been doing it for four years, and they're still not sure which foot is their left, but generally they know it. from other people, like science teacher Bill Hyland, who gives his spare time to help with the band. One of the important things is that regardless of how good a player 
the kid is or how good a marcher the kid is, um, everybody participates. It's not like some bands where you have to uh, compete to be in the band, and if you're not real good, you don't get to march. Well, I think our philosophy here is that everybody marches. without student musicians, there could be no band at all. Mary Wood is a junior who plays the saxophone. Well, he keeps saying he wants us to win, but I don't know if that's... Yeah, I guess that's true, because, you know, don't you think so? That he always, he's rough on us and yells at us to get out there fast and to practice and to memorize all the stuff. Well, he's... He's a good guy, though. Off, off of the field, he's totally different, I think, than, off, than on the field. Because you can tell also before performances when he gets all nervous because he says he starts, he starts telling us yeah. what to do and everything. Like, you know, don't forget to stop on the five-yard line. Don't forget to, you know, turn to the, turn to the, to the box. Yeah, press box and all this, you know. Behind the ranks of musicians, there are many people who lend their time and support to band activities. Tremendous parent support also. I think there are over 350 members of the Boosters Club this year. And they're always there helping, working, and come to the parade and polish shoes and you know, trim tassels and get us uh, ready to go. They had a successful raffle this year. The parents bringing in all the prizes and selling over $3,000. Band Boosters President, Don Slama. I got almost $1,500 of what it was. I'm sure I could get it. It's a matter of going out and getting it. But one person can't do it. You know, you know one person, you've got to have a good group of people, a lot of people to do it. Dean of Student Activities, Harry Bettencourt. I always think back again to the first meeting of the band at the Boosters and coming down on a Tuesday night and there probably were about 50 or 75 parents in the room and that was the first taste I'd ever ha ever had directly with a parent booster group and I was really impressed with the numbers and the turnout of that meeting. With everyone's cooperation, the band is ready to compete in a tournament. And competition. Bob Gomez talks about competition. Oh, I think they're uh, they're good. They're uh, good experience. I don't think that uh, you know the whole program should be based on uh, always winning first places here and there and uh, the other place. And uh, I also think that the program should be balanced so that uh, you know you're, you're not spending the entire year running around to parades and competitions trying to bring trophies on, but, uh, but also having you know the concert part of the work that's important also. So I think this program has to be balanced so you get a, a little bit of everything. But on a sunny day, with the crowds watching, there's excitement in the air as the tournament parade is about to begin.
everybody does march kind of forces everybody to come up to the standards of the uh, better marchers because it's a real esprit de corps. Everybody wants to look good out there. And uh, kids recognize that, that they know they're individuals, but they have to give up some of those individual rights for the good of the group. I know in, in uh, just moving with the band on trips that they're very aware of their image as the Cupertino High School band. And we received many compliments um, from the places that we've gone, such things as this is the best group of students we've ever had here. And I think that's a credit to their acknowledgement that they are a group, and yet they're also individuals. Drum majors Kevin Hain and Craig Sama. In the Saratoga Parade, the band took three first places and three second places. 150 members of the band, 65 in attached units. Drill captain is Addie Rock. The tall flags are the nickname for our tall flag unit is the swing flag. They have appeared in the Rose Bowl Parade, Cotton Bowl Parade. They host the Cupertino Tournament of Bands from Cupertino, the Pioneer Marching Band. They Thank you. 
Los Los Altos? Well, see, I didn't see it all. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's really cute. Did you see him this afternoon? Yeah. Yeah. We romped up on. Ladies and gentlemen, from Cupertino, California, the Cupertino High School Pioneer Marching Band. 